he wants to go to he wants to stay in London. Um, his partner, she's just had a you know a little one, and he has no chance that he's gonna up and take his family up to the north of England. It's not happening. He's definitely signing for Arsenal. Now, do I think that Arsenal's bid was derisory or you know immature and silly? No, because I think Arsenal know a hundred percent that he wants to come to Arsenal. So, I mean, sometimes you got you you, you got to do what you got to do. Now, listen, if you know as a club that somebody wants to come to your club, you're not going to go into with the first offer. But I was saying when you look by your house or whatever it is, you always always go under. You always go under. So. I, I I don't know. I think that um, some people are being a bit harsh. How now. do you know I that he wants to come to Arsenal, though, mate? Big up African Gunner, man. Have listen, a good one. listen. I, I'm not going to say too much, but I know for sure. There's there's. Do you there's hear no it on good or on good or uh, good or far? Good or free, yeah, a hundred percent. So that's Is this all the same I'm person say. who told you Casado's going to Chelsea. Uh, no, someone else, someone else. So, listen, like, I, I'm just lucky and fortunate that I'm in a position that I can find out things and know a few things. But listen, regardless. I'm not saying for sure that, you know, that, that that Edu isn't to blame. I'm not saying that Edu is doing an amazing job. I actually don't really care. I don't think he's doing as bad as what people are making him out to be. But I think for sure Arsenal are playing it a little bit smart because they know the player wants to come. So when the player wants to come, it's down to that buying club to try and do whatever they can to try and get the best deal for them. Because ultimately, West Ham kind of don't have a say because if the player doesn't want to go Man City or Man United then you have to almost accept Arsenal's bid. Now, how you accept his their bid is there's negotiations that happen. And I think, yeah, ultimately, it's going to be a thing. This isn't the Mudrick case. Mudrick was fully in a different situation. And ultimately, Arsenal wanted to bid the same amount of money, but we just ended up not wanting to do that. So, yeah, I think it was it's a lot different. But, yeah, ultimately... I do think that the deal is going to get done. I'm very certain the deal is going to get done, more so because he wants to stay in London. And if he wants to stay in London, there's only one club that he's going to because he's definitely not going to Chelsea, for sure. There's okay. Let, let me just so just so I'm equipped with the right information when when I'm going into wars trying to defend Arsenal's signing potential over Man City. What about the fact that they can guarantee trophies? What about the fact that they can guarantee him a potential opportunity to be just as competitive or maybe even a more competitive team? What about the fact that they can offer more money? What about the fact that they could potentially offer more of a potential better pay package? What about more, the fact that they could potentially offer more better personal terms or more realistic personal terms? Because if they do, if they do uh, give, give them a, a situation where it's like the bonuses are meant on winning a Champions League and a Premier League. They just won a Champions League and Premier League. Without yeah, okay, so so what you're asking are two different things. The player side of things and the club side of things. Yes, so I agree. The add-ons, from Arsenal's point of view, probably need to be a bit better, for sure. They need to be more attainable and achievable, 100%. Now, if you're asking about this player side of things, you got to think to yourself, not all players are like a Haaland or like a Jack Grealish that they want to jump on a ship. They want to be part of the ship that get to that end destination. And from what I know, Declan Rice is a player who wants to be part of something to get to a point. I don't think he's someone who just wants to jump on a bandwagon and take all the glory from there. So, listen, ultimately, we're going to find out. We're, we're going to find out if Man City bid. We're going to find out if Man City's bid is accepted. We're going to find out where he goes in the end. I'm very, very certain he's going to go to Arsenal. I, I'm very, I'm a hundred percent sure he's going to Arsenal, and um, I, I won't be surprised if in the next few days, early next week, that there's some sort of movement, and um, and you you see him, you know, pretty much done, done, done and dusted. He's coming to Arsenal, and if he isn't, then I'm going to be, I'm going to look like a fool. But uh, from what I've been told from various different people, he's coming to Arsenal, and um, I, I just want to put it out there that sometimes negotiations, well, you, you got to remember. Arsenal are spending a hundred million pounds. They're talking the language no one here understands. They're putting down money no one here has ever ever spoken about and ever even understood about. So sometimes you also have to look at it like that as well. Like so, listen, I am definitely not sitting here bigging up Edu because I do think part of it is he does need to, or not Edu, Tim Lewis as well. I think some of the negotiation team probably need to just sometimes go in a little bit more stronger and a bit more assertive with some of the bids. But I'm also not going to sit here and blame them because if you know that a player wants to come, physically wants to come just to Arsenal, or the probability of him going anywhere else is very, very low, then Arsenal have all the 
all the jewels in their hand. It's not Man City. It's not Man United. It's not West Ham anymore because you can send him. It's not like basketball. I'm just, I've, I was just checking now. They, um, the, the, the Golden State Warriors just traded Chris Paul to, um, obviously to, to, to Golden State Warriors and got rid of Jordan Paul. They don't have a say. It's different. The art, the player has to eventually sign off on that contract. And if he doesn't want to go somewhere, then you've got an issue because that's when Man City will pull out. And then West Ham are stuck in a position where they've got a player who pretty much has been told by the owner of the club the day after they actually won the Euro, Euro for Conference, Conference League that they want to, that they want to actually, um, they're going to sell him. They're going to let him go. So listen, man, if we, we, people don't... Let me ask you this, though, Gun. I, I just need to read like, this you... super chat quickly because my guy is winning a Ballon d'Or. Yeah, yeah. Big up to my guy with the, with the super chat. He's saying, Gunnar Lee, uh, didn't Modric want to join our, uh, come to Arsenal? What makes you sure he won't change his mind? Listen, he did want to come, but I think he was more force and you know what when you want to when you want to get a deal done like Mudrick does when you wanted to just get any more a better wage which Mudrick did in the end sometimes you just get gazumped and that's just it like and I, I that, that literally is it I don't even think it was that with Mudrick I think people have got to remember he's in a war-torn country as well there you go. to Shakhtar so you know that that one kind of makes a little bit more sense but he yeah, just I was going to ask you the same thing. Do you like you, you said you got it on good authority that Declan Rice, you know, kind of wants wants Arsenal, wants to stay in London mainly because of his missus and his kids. But do you not think like a club like Manchester City who win trophies year in year out, who have just gotten rid of Gundogan, so can possibly offer him a starting position in their midfield as well? Um, you know, uh, money in terms of wage packet and stuff like that. Do you not think that might have tweaked his thinking a little bit more? Do you know what I mean? It's all right coming into Arsenal, being part of the project and, you know, being a main main member of the project, let's just say. Or you go to Manchester City and win, you win more trophies than, you know, most players have ever won in their career. Well, listen, people can say that, but look, Man City aren't going to be here forever. Football goes in cycles. It was only two seasons, three seasons ago. Liverpool was telling us they're going to win the quad. And then where did they finish? Fifth. So, look, football happens. Football changes. Man United, listen, I was fully an Arsenal, fully-fledged Arsenal fan, knew everything about football in 2004. If you told me 20 years later that we had still wouldn't have won a league, I would have I would have slapped you and laughed at you. So, football comes around in circles and cycles. Every season isn't the same. So, you can't just bank on the fact that because Man City did the treble this season, that they're going to do it next season. Yes, they have fantastic team and a fantastic player. But... They might be losing Mares. They might be losing um, Bernardo Silva. Um, Gundogan, Gundogan's already gone. If they don't get Declan Rice, then stuff changes. When they, they Carl Walker is also someone who looks to be, you know, to and fro, or if he's going to stay. And look, ultimately, you look at it and say, Man City are fantastic. There's not a thing about them that you can complain about. But it doesn't go like that. Football just doesn't go like that because Liverpool won the league one season. The next season, where did they finish? So we can't just go off that premise that because Man City have won everything this season, that is going to happen. Mo uh, uh, motivation plays a factor into it. Teams suss out, you know, other teams and they start to work out how to play against that inverted fullback or someone like John Stones, how to manipulate. Things change and I'm not saying it's going to, but that's how football works. And that's the, that's the beauty about it. The beauty about football is that every season is different because if it was like that, we might as well go and watch... The Bundesliga or Liga, uh, not even the Bundesliga. All I, all I gotta say is, I understand that you're extremely confident about the Declarize thing. I am too. But the reason why I'm more confident is because the groundwork that we've done and the fact that we've done so much due diligence behind this deal that it seems like it's going to take a lot for Man City to turn his head. Is that what you say or what you agree with? And also, we have someone here, El Maris. El Maris is on to you, bro. He's saying, Lee, better Listen, see man, you here. I'll be Declarize. here. Fine for us. All right, I'll be here. But look, I, I just want to even think about it. Everybody in the chat, just think about it. Do you think that Arsenal have got so far to the point where they've they're gonna, they've they've put one bid in apparently of seventy five million pounds per fifteen and another bid of what is it seventy five or seventy whatever eighty million 90, plus 90. five or ten? Do you think they're gonna get this far for someone who they put all this groundwork in to not bid again? Do you actually Let me ask sit you there and think? Do you One actually word. sit there and think? One word. Mudrick. 
Yes, we but put in ground. We put, we, yeah, I know it's a different thing altogether, but we put in yes, so much groundwork with Mudrick. Yeah, that we bid for him yeah. twice. We ended up not paying, matching uh, what Chelsea wanted, and he went to Chelsea. I just think so I, I don't. I think. All this groundwork, groundwork, and uh, bidding, it, it means no, 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 nothing. I'm until talking about the Arsenal do you show. think they're going to put a record bid in, a record bid? to try and get a player to then back away. It doesn't make sense. Why would you do all of that to then say, okay, no, we're not going to go for him. And then what happens yeah, but... is if we were to go for someone like Casey, though, they're going to ask for exactly the same money. So you might as well go for Declan Rice anyway. I think I said it's already done. So it's like, if we don't get Declan Rice, we're screwed. So, so, so look, there you go. So look, Arsenal ain't dumb. People actually sit there and think, oh, Edu's just cooking up in a grill and then he just starts putting bids in. That is not how it works. <laughs> I can tell you that you, you know when bids come out and when Fabrizio and all of that tweet them, you know the bids come out like four days ago, but they're just catching what? now. Do, do you actually do what? people actually pe do people actually think this is what happens, right? Yeah, the bid goes in at five at five at one o'clock, and then when Fabrizio finds out at 105, they've they've only looked over it in five minutes. They've looked over all the legalities. They've looked over all the money. They looked over everything. And they said, no, nah, we don't want to. You that, see, that, bro, the, when I said this, when I said this on the football terrace, people were calling me a conspiracy theorist. It's like, actually mad. It's almost like, oh, they see it. That straight away, it's not enough money. Reject. N what? No, that is not real life. The, the bid goes in three, four days before. Like, yes. and they, they mull it over. They look over it. it as, as you've just said. It, it's advantageous for West Ham to continuously keep doing this. Why? Because they want to try and get as much money as possible. But they're going to soon realise that they're going to have to accept something close to what West Ham... And I, listen, I agree. I actually agree. If, West, if Arsenal want this player, fork the bloody money up. But you don't have to do it all the way that they want. You don't always just give people what you want. It's almost like with a child. You don't just give in to what they want. You, you want to give them things, but you have to also teach them a lesson as well. You also have to try and do things in a different way. So, look, man, yeah. I'm not it's sitting not here defending the whole Edu, Tim Lewis, nah. all of those guys. I'm simply saying we need to just... Some of us need to get composure. Like, just calm nah. down a little bit. Calm down and let things play out. As I said, I'm. I think. I think that the, the. I think that West Ham will accept a bid early next week from Arsenal, and he'll be an Arsenal player in the it's, first season. It's, it's not the money that we was offering that is the problem to me. I don't mind Arsenal going in and oh, saying, no, 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 "You want 100 million? We'll give you 80 million." No, but I don't mind that. Something. It's the way we structure always, things. What he's saying, we have to listen to what he's saying right now. People are listening to every tweet that they see and they're letting it dictate their emotion when what actually is being tweeted might be two days ago's news. So we're having outrage over something being rejected that they've already started to work on the third bid. Like really and truly, we need to an analyze what information we're getting given and we have to see what who does it benefit. I think at this moment in time, it benefited Man City to, uh, uh, to to join in late. It benefited West Ham to have Man City join in. It benefited West Ham to continuously leak all the information. And now that Arsenal are getting closer and closer to getting the deal done, it's beneficial to to West Ham to have rumours that other clubs are now bidding big, uh, big fees and leaking what they've bid. Why do you think it's a coincidence that the Manchester United bid is being leaked? And nobody's really taking it serious. Why do you think it's a coincidence that the Manchester City bid is being leaked? Because who's it coming from? It's not coming from Manchester. It's coming from people in London. And who is it? West Ham. So they have a vested interest to create all this hoopla, to create the situation. And people are getting called conspiracy theorists. But the reality of the situation is the way football journalism works, it works based on a tight... Uh, uh, you know how people used to watch football on tape delay? That's how the football journalists are. They're behind they're giving us information, drip feeding it to us after they've already heard the news and it's been confirmed a hundred times. So now I don't really, I, I, everything that we get, we have to understand that it's late. Kai Havertz could have been done two months, uh, two weeks ago. We only heard about it the other day. Declan Rice could be done right now, but we won't hear about it until until they're ready. I, I As I said, I, I don't think that you're going to have to wait too much longer. Let's just say that. And 